Hi, welcome back. This is Charles, and we're taking uh, a look at tutorial seven in our tutorial basics series. Um, in today's tutorial, we're going to be um, basically assaulting a town, or you could say assaulting a structure, specifically the city of Corinth. Um, and we will also be um, trying to push uh, General Polk's force here uh, farther away from Corinth, and uh, if we're lucky, um, our fleet here, uh, the Cumberland fleet by Admiral Foote, uh, will also possibly bombard them. So it's not necessarily guaranteed, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, okay, so first of all, in the last tutorial, we, we went into Corneth and we won the battle. And so basically, the, um, the region is controlled by the Union, but the town still flies uh the confederate flag the, Confe the flag of the confederacy and the reason is that is because the confederacy actually still controls the town and uh, more specifically um the reason they still control the town is because there is a, um, a militia unit still in it and we have actually not assaulted the town um so in other words we had a battle the battle was outside the town and we've taken control of the region outside the town but um the confederacy still controls the town um we want to um, basically take the town, and we're going to do that by assaulting. So here in the tutorial, though, it it basically goes through and it says there's a couple of ways of, of doing this. One is um, we could continue to um, besiege Corneth, the town, and it would be likely that they would probably surrender very quickly um, because our force is much larger than theirs. And of course, the second option is, and I alluded to it just a minute ago, is that we will assault it. Now, the kind of what goes in here is is talks about some of the risk and the com the complexity of um assaulting really more specifically a fort it's, it's it's very rare that um in the actual game at least against a good player that um and you know your opponent is going to drop a large force into a town it's, it's quite unrealistic it's more realistic if they're going to use that kind of defensive structures are going to build um some sort of fort and it's going to provide significant um defensive and frontage bonuses um and to them um, this kind of can get some, somewhat complex um, as far as the math goes. So let me just, I think, trying to understand the basic, um, how it actually worked in the American Civil War history will make sense. So uh, after Grant's amazing campaign um, south of, of Vicksburg, uh, defeating Pemberton's forces in several battles, they finally get, to pe finally get to Vicksburg, Grant orders the assault, and what happens? It spectacularly fails. So he, and the reason is, um, once they've gotten back to Vicksburg, Vicksburg, the Confederates, Confederates were able to take up um, these very good defensive positions that limited frontage. So in other words, Grant could not, you know, could not use um, his superior force against the Confederates. And of course, the Confederates were able to defeat a much larger force. Um, another way of thinking about it is um, basically it limits, it limits a fort or a structure, also a city, it's going to limit the amount of, of space that um, you can be attacked. And of course, that just intuitively makes sense. If you're in an endless fields, your area for attack is could really be um, could really be all around. You could be completely you know circled. But um, if you're in a fort, that that tends to not be the case. It's often your you know, I mean, back against the river, or you know, if you know less, you know, basically less less frontal area of the way it, it's built that, that that your opponent could bring forces to bear. Um, all of that's not going to really play into what we're going to do today because um, what we're just going to basically assault and the force we're, we're assaulting um, is, is much smaller. But the tutorial tech text here kind of gives you a little bit of taste on talking about frontage and width of battlefield and kind of this kind of like the Vicksburg story that I was just um, I was just telling you about. Um, so what it wants us to do is to basically um, assault in. It's going to it asks us to to choose Sherman's core. So I'm going to click on Sherman's core, um, and then um, it um, wants us to take a look at different postures. So um, I'm not going to go through these in a lot of detail, but basically the green one is passive posture. Um, just think that basically. Your forces are doing very, very little. They're just being relaxed, resting. Um, defensive posture, you're going to, you know, 
can typically be on defense um, unless something changes, like you move into territory that's, that's not yours. Uh, offensive posture, you're choosing to take an offensive posture and you'll attack both it within your own territory and other territories. And finally, assault posture. And this, is, of course, is used to assault a town or, or, a, or a fort or basically some sort of structure. Um, so I'm going to click on that. So assault posture. And then I think we're just going to do sustained attacks. This is the normal, um, just the normal attack. Um, so, that, so in the next turn, we're going to play here in a minute. Sherman's core should and definitely will. Um, defeats this tiny, tiny militia force, probably just a few hundred men. Um, okay, finally, it wants us to send McCook's core uh, after to um, this region, Chish Chishomingo, interesting name. Um, so I'm going to grab them. They're on offense. Um, I'll move them over. Okay, I'm going to put them on defensive posture um, so they can basically, because um, once they enter this territory, they will then uh, automatically take offensive posture again, but they don't need to use extra uh, effort to be on offensive posture when there are no other forces in the region. Um, uh, of course, up there. Or, yeah, so, um, and then finally, it wants us to um, bombard, and we do that by, let's find, um, probably going to be this one here. And there it is, yep, so uh, fleet bombardment. So now you can see that there is a bombardment button here. And uh, all right, so we've done three things, basically. We're going to send Sherman's Corps to assault the town. Um, we're going to send the Cook's Corps into the, into the region just to the east. And we've clicked on, on the bombard option by the Cumberland Fleet. Um, and what it, actually what's going to happen is if we, if we do engage um, Polk's Corps, the, the fleet can, can support us. All right, so let's see if that happens. And um, the entire force, as we guessed, is, is defeated. Oh, that's stalemate, so that's interesting. But uh, of course, that is ours now. Uh, we did go east and um, we won, and Bragg's force is lost. Um, don't know if the fleet bombarded or not. Let's see. Let's see if there's a message about it. Um. Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Well, it, the fleet bombard button is on. It doesn't. There's no message here that um they didn't bombard. So I'll have to look into that. Um. But I guess the big news is, is that we have now taken uh, Corinth Town through the assault, and we've continued to push um, push uh, the Confederate forces back. Uh, okay, well, that's going to be it for, for Tutorial 7, and uh, I'll continue uh, probably um, quite shortly here. Okay, have a good day.